Hi guys and gals, Froggy here. Uh, I just thought I'd open up this video with a picture of my flag. I put my flag up today. It's 9-11. And uh, we're going to go to work on the Corvette, but uh, don't forget what happened on 9-11. That's all I'm going to say. Okay guys and gals, uh, Froggy back. Uh, I pulled the pulley off and I did a separate video actually on using a pulley puller and if you go back to my channel and look under tools you'll find uh, how, I, how I did that. I, I don't want to clutter up this one too much with uh, secondary topics uh, like using a pulley puller. So anyway, pulleys off, the old uh, power steering pump, one, two, three, four bolts. I'm going to take this off and then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bracket back in first and then the new puller um, has a has a pulley that's got uh, openings in it so that I'll be able to attach the uh, power steering pump bolts uh, just by going right through that uh, pulley. There's a little um, uh, bracket or whatever you want to call it uh, that holds the pump on it. It's got different, it's two short bolts and two long bolts so if I were you I'd just leave them cradled in there like that. Take your old pump out and uh, now I'm going to clean up this uh, big bracket that holds the alternator and the power steering pump. Okay we'll start putting it back together now. This is the bracket the big bracket for the alternator and the power steering pump. You remember those two bolts that I said they were the captured bolts and to make sure you marked them or kept them in the right place. I just kept mine in the right place because they're slightly different lengths. Um, if you've got them mixed up then just try screwing them in easy. One of them will probably bottom out and the other one won't. I'm not sure about that but that's just a suggestion. Uh, so we'll start by locating the bracket with those two. There, I've got my light on one right there and the other one right there. See those two? Okay, that's our start. Okay, Frog is back. I just had a nice uh, lunch break, egg sandwich, and a Diet Coke. I think the egg sandwich was supposed to be for my son, but he didn't bring it to work, so oh well. It was there. Anyway, uh, scratch that idea about putting in the big bracket first because if you do that you can't put this pump, this uh, power steering pump with the mounted pulley it just won't fit in there the way I've got it with, you know, still got my ABS in there still got my throttle body on there so it just see it's it sits down in a recess actually so if you bolt this on then you've got to get this all the way out here imagine where my hand is is where the ABS is it just isn't enough clearance so we're going to put the power steering pump in we're going to mount it in and remember it's got this bracket the bracket has two short bolts and two long bolts. The two long bolts go right on the wings, you know, the, the end wings, and the short bolts, one goes in the pump and then one goes to the bracket. Okay, so I'm going to have to take these bolts out to slide the bracket in, but I'm going to lay them out so I remember where they go. Okay, there you go. The brackets in, the bolts, I just spin this around and slide them through the holes. Now that's the beauty of having a pulley that has, uh, I call it skeletonized. Uh, otherwise we'd have to press this pulley on after we mounted the power steering pump. Okay, so I'm going to tighten this up. I'm going to see if I can find some torque specs. I, I might or might not find some torque specs. Uh, but uh, give me a minute, I'll be back. These four are 25, the power steering pump bracket, this bracket that holds on, holds the pump on. And then everything else is pretty much 50, 
um, including there's all these big bolts including the ones that hold the reservoir because they actually also hold this bracket and the reservoir so uh, 25 and 50 I did not find any Loctite on anything so uh, I'm not going to put any Loctite on these it's a good you know there's four four good steel bolts into into this aluminum I think it'll be okay I have a little butterfly uh, air tool that I'm going to use to spin these on. I can set this to very, very light torque, so it's almost like spinning it on with my hand uh, because I don't want to, certainly don't want to cross thread anything here. Yeah save a little time there and now I'll use that same socket on my this is a 3 8 drive torque wrench and I'll set them to 25 all right we're all set on that and let's see if we can uh, wiggle this back in there without moving that throttle body or anything else I'm gonna need two hands for this I'll show it to you when I get it in well <clears throat> It was ridiculous how easy that went in. No problem at all. However, comma, I don't think I'm going to be able to torque those two bolts that are behind the pulley, the one I've been ones I've been calling captured. So I think I'm going to pull this out, and I will put a little um, blue Loctite on there. I can probably, with an open end wrench, I can probably get them to uh, maybe half that torque spec. I can't, I can't get a box and I can't get a box wrench on there either um, because it's just too tight to the pulley. And the only other thing would be to take the whole thing off, pull the pulley. <sighs> then <laughs> I can't really do that because. I can't press the pulley on while it's all in here in between the ABS and the bracket. So I'm just going to have to go with a little less uh, torque spec on those, although there's one, two, three, four right there, five, six. There's six bolts holding that bracket on. Uh, yeah, so I think we're okay. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull it out. It's easy now, in and out. I put the, a little bit of blue Loctite on there, not too much. And then uh, I'm going to put them back in and then put the rest of them in. Okay? I like this. Um, this chapstick style um, Loctite now instead of the drippy kind. It's like a it's like a grease or paste, and then it uh, dries you know when there's no air touching it, and uh, it stays nice and fresh. I picked up a few tubes of these. I don't know if I've got a red tube, but I've got a couple of blue tubes. So we'll put some of this on. There, just so you get some right there. You don't have to go all the way around. It'll spread itself around when you thread it. And I think I think the next guy will probably be able to get this off. The next guy who works on it, uh, because the torque spec will be less than it was at the factory. So let's put this back on. Okay, those two captured bolts. I ran them in all the way, and then I backed them out a couple of turns, so that I won't cross thread the next two when I make them. You know, when I try to find the hole when I thread them in. Uh, now I want to make a, a quick correction here. It's not six bolts that are holding this big bracket on. It's only four. The two uh, that also hold the power steering reservoir and those two down there. The other two that I thought were doing some work are just holding their alternator. So correction there. I'm probably just going to put a little blue Loctite on these also because this one obviously I can't get a torque wrench on. This one I might be able to, but hey, what the heck. Little blue Loctite is not going to hurt anything. So it's going on. 
Well, this is the um, <clears throat> the hose that that uh, mechanic I mentioned in my other uh, removal video was nice enough to give me. Looks like it's right on there for the ID inside diameter, and uh, I'm just going to mark it and trim it down to the correct size of what I need. If you took that tensioner off, as I did, uh, put it back on before you put the reservoir on. Um, it has to be torqued to 37, and uh, it'll be easier to do that. You get a nice clear shot before you put the reservoir on. And make sure you have two bolts caught on the uh, big big bracket um, because you need you're pulling up against that big bracket. Now we got to play with getting the reservoir on, and uh, it's a little tricky because you have got to have four bolts lined up and start the threads before you tighten any of them, of course. Um, what I did is I attached the uh, top end of that hose first, and then I left the bottom open, and you've got to kind of get the captured bolt and the bottom at the same time. And uh, and then the back, then the one that's closest to the middle of the engine. Uh, so let's give it a shot. Well, as you can see, I finally took the throttle body off, three quarters of the way off, and just laid it over to the side. Why? Because there was simply no way I could get any kind of wrench or anything on that captured bolt down there. That one and the two on the reservoir I could get to. They rem remember, they were supposed to go to 50 foot-pounds. That one, there was just no way unless what I did, I took the throttle body off. And now I'm going to try and get a crow's foot on there. Because the, the bolt is so close to the power steering pump, and it's kind of recessed in but I know at least I can get a long open-end wrench on there but I'm trying to get a crow's foot on there and see because I can put more on a crow's foot so that's where I'm at right now that one captured bolt that's down the most not the top one but the bottom one okay guys and gals Froggy's really beat. I've been on this since about 10 o'clock this morning. It's 6. And I took about a half an hour lunch. But anyway, I finally got it figured out. I'm not going to finish it tonight. But I want to tape or video what I did before I, uh, before I forget about it tomorrow. First off, I think I gave myself a lot of extra work by trying to take the old pump off and the bracket at the same time. I should have just broken the pulley, just break it with a big screwdriver or a little pry bar. It's plastic with a metal hub. When you break it, then you can access the four bolts that hold the pump to the bracket, but I didn't do that. So, I'm uh, just offering that up to you as a uh, suggestion. What I did, well, you know what I did because you saw the removal. For the install, the problem was this bracket has four bolts that have to be torqued to 50 pounds, and there's no way to get at them once the the power steering pump is there and once the reservoir is there. So the reservoir part was easy. It, there's a clip. You unclip the plastic part of the reservoir then you can get those two bolts. I'm shining my light at those two bolts there. There and there. That hold the bracket and hold the bracket for the reservoir. Now the other ones you can't get to them for even 10 pounds, never mind 50 pounds, with the fuel pump, uh, with the power steering pump in there. So the power steering pump has to go on 
last and it has to have the pulley on because there's no room to press the pulley on once it's in there. So here's what you got to do. There's three uh, three nuts, well there's, there's three bolts, one of them has a nut on it that hold the ABS unit. They hold it solid to the front frame part of the car. Loosen those three up. You don't take them out. Just loosen them as far as you can loosen them without taking them out. And then take a piece of string, something strong, and tie the ABS unit. Shove it forward towards the radiator and then tie it off so that you can uh, have some extra space. It's only about an extra maybe an inch space but that's all you need. Once you've done that you can take and drop in, drop this in. You have to you know, wiggle it a little bit this way or that way. I'm not going to go through all that. But there's enough space. Torque this guy up to 50 pounds. Then you can put this in and because now you've got a pulley that has holes in it, skeletonized, you'll be able to get to those small bolts that only take, uh, I forget what I told you they take, I think it was, oh never mind, I'm not going to guess at it. I did tell you what the uh, torque spec was when I, when I put them on the first time, when I put the power steering pump onto the bracket outside the car. So you will be able to get to those you gotta, you got to move the throttle body and you almost take it all the way off. I, I left one, one hose and one electrical connection on there. But you got to move that and then you got to move the ABS. Then you can drop it in. Now that applies and take the reservoir um, off. And then that all applies whether or not you take the bracket off those three things. One, two, three. Those are your key points. Throttle body, the reservoir, and move the ABS. Slide it forward a little bit. Then you can drop in your new power steering pump. And then uh, if you took it out the way I showed you, then you've got to tighten up that, that bracket before you do all this. Uh, so that's it for tonight. I'm going to wrap it up. I am beat to beans. I'm just really beat and I'm gonna pick it up tomorrow and finish it up. But I know I know I'm I'm there because I got the I got the plan. I've got a plan on how to do it. I uh, hope this helps you out. Uh, I'll add some more to this tape tomorrow and finish it off. Froggy out for tonight. Bye bye. Okay, guys and gals, day three on this job. Uh, we're gonna finish it up. Uh, I'm just gonna give you a quick recap. I ended up having to take off the throttle body and I had to move, loosen and move the ABS forward and um, that was to get this bracket in and get it torqued properly. Couldn't get a wrench on there to torque it with the fuel pump, uh, not the fuel pump, excuse me, the, the power steering pump mounted in there. Uh, so now I've got room to put the, the power steering pump in there and I still got those other parts moved out of the way so that's what's next right down in there the power steering pump is going in I'll uh, film it when it's done now you want to have this bracket that has four holes in it for four bolts have that on there before you put it in don't try to get it in afterwards so the bracket the bolts I'm just going to uh, I'm going to have the long ones in because I might not have space to, to get them in afterwards. I'll try it with all four of them in there actually. We'll see how it goes. I used a long socket, 13 millimeter, instead of my fingers to reach through through the pulley and to start the um, the three bolts that go into the bracket. Uh, the fourth one, you remember, the fourth one goes into the fuel pump itself. So the fourth one kind of holds the fuel pump, and then the other three go into the bracket. 
and now I've got to uh, get a get a wrench in there and tighten them all up. I've got all four started. It wasn't too hard, but you need an extension like uh, this. Or I I used to have a little knob that would fit on a, a socket, but I couldn't find it, so that'll work. Now I'm going to tighten. Here's a picture of the, the torque wrench that I've got. It's a 3 8 drive torque wrench and I've got a a little like a one inch extension into a short sock, 13 millimeter socket. And I'm on the third one down, I think it's the one that goes right into the fuel pump. But I just want to show you uh, how I'm getting the torque wrench in there. You can shove on that ABS block, shove it around a little bit more. You can uh, usually get another half inch or so to get your wrench in there. Okay, I've got all all four of them torqued to 25. I want to show you a little trick. Uh, to get your torque wrench in there and your your socket and your extent and your extension. Uh, this is this is what I used a real short like a one inch extension and a short socket. You can take it and put it into one of the holes in the pulley and then that gets you away from the ABS. So put it in the hole and then you can move the hole around like that and you can see you can get all you can get all four of them. Keep keep your wrench inside the pulley like that. Then you find a place where you take it out and it's done. Okay, uh, next, uh, I think I'm going to um, go under the car and I'm going to put the ABS back where it's supposed to be just by tightening up three bolts on the bracket. And this is the bracket, the bolts are on the other side, they go down to the frame. And then I'll probably also connect the um, pressure, the high pressure hose that comes off the fuel pump. It's it's right down there. It points downwards and there and your hose will be sitting down there. Hopefully it's got a little cover on it so nothing dirty gets in there. Uh, so those two things under the car. So we'll jack up the car now and get underneath and get those two. And we're I can see daylight at the end of the tunnel here. We're getting there. Alright this is the bracket that we're gonna that we loosened up three bolts and uh, we're gonna tighten that up now. The uh, all right, the two small bracket bolts go to 20 pound feet. The big one, which has a nut on the other end, goes to 74. That goes through the steering rack. Okay, so two 20s and a 74. Okay, here's a quick shot of uh, the bracket bolts for the ABS. Remember the small ones are 20, and the big one, which goes through the steering rack, is 74. And you have to put a a box wrench on the other side of it. It's uh, 18. Yeah, and this one is uh, 13. Okay. Okay, we got the um, the bracket for the ABS is all torqued up. I don't know if I have showed you how I lift up one side of the car, but anyway, here's a picture of it. Just be safe. You can lift up both ends of the car with uh, one jacking point, either the front jacking point or the back one. Uh, doesn't hurt anything. I wouldn't want to leave it up there for a month or anything, but. Uh, uh, just thought I'd give you a shot of that. Now I'm going to go after that high pressure hose connection so I can let the car down. Let me give you an intermediate shot of what I'm doing. I went underneath and I got the high pressure hose started. I got it pointed up into the hole in the um, power steering pump where it's going to thread in. Remember, this one's the one that's got like a sleeve nut, in my description of a sleeve nut. Anyway, I can see that this tensioner, uh, this idler, excuse me, the idler was going to be in the way. So I took the idler off. That's pretty easy. 
There's the idler. Now I'm going to reach down there with my, uh, well, I don't know which hand, whichever hand works, and see if I can get that uh, hose fitting started. Uh, I want to make a correction here. Power steering pump bolts go to 18, not 25. 25 is Newton meters. And power steering uh, reservoir bracket bolt, which is the the big one uh, that holds the, you know, that bolts the bracket onto the block of the engine is 37, not 50. So mine are a little extra tight. The pressure hose that I'm going under the car to do, I'm going to use a crow's foot. That goes to 20. Okay, uh, while I was under there, I slipped the uh, serpentine belt off because I'm going to want to make sure there's no oil on that so it's easier just to take it out and you know, take a look at it and clean it if I need to. Uh, also, on the uh, on the torque specs, most torque wrenches, whether they're cheap ones or expensive ones, are only guaranteed plus or minus four percent. Uh, so, if you do make a mistake and over torque something a little bit, don't go back and loosen it up. Just leave it leave it be. It should be fine. Um, that one that went from, was it, 37 to 50? Yeah, it was about, you know, maybe 20% or 25% over torque, plus or minus. So, I don't know. Uh, I should have been looking a little more carefully at that chart that I used, but this is froggy and you get what you get. So, I'm uh, going to let it down and uh, get some lunch. I like this floor jacket because it's got a got a slow mode. It let you can let it down slow or fast. Some of the other ones just come down fast. So there we go. Be back in about 20 minutes. Okay, Froggy's back from lunch. Let's put that uh, tensioner back on. I think the serpentine belt will run a lot better with that tensioner in place. And uh, then uh, probably do the throttle body. Okay, I keep calling that a tensioner. It's an idler. Let's back on there. 37 pounds. Let's do the throttle body. Make sure you've got it all the way on so that it lines up with all the other pulleys because there is a way you can tighten it up and it's cocked. It's not all the way on. So eyeball it. Make sure it's all the way on. <clears throat> I, uh, I put some paper towels down inside the throttle body and you know, I mean inside the uh, intake manifold and uh, on the top of the engine there and I'm going to just lightly mist it with some brake clean just to get the edges of that uh, gasket all nice and, and clean and then I'll pull the rag out and uh, that should do it I think clean the other side also those little throttle body bolts are uh, 106 inch pounds multiplied times 0.083 it's about eight, eight or nine foot pounds so go easy on those little guys and otherwise you'll be uh, buying a new intake manifold don't forget your connections that you took apart there's a uh, uh, throttle body cooling uh, coolant connection and some wiring connections. One of these days I'll do a full video on on how to uh, remove your throttle body and clean it and put it back in and, and I'll go over all those uh, detailed connections but that's not the point of this video so I'm not going to uh, break off into that right now. Let's get our reservoir back on. I'm leaving uh, that one throttle body electrical connection off just for now but I will put that back on and remember get your short hose attached on the top side and leave the bottom side open and then when you're getting that second bolt in uh, you have to do that simultaneously with putting the hose on. I found that was the best way to do it. Okay we got our reservoir right there back on two hoses connected 
that that little clamp that holds it in, I had to bend the middle finger on it because it was a little, it was too loose. It wasn't holding it down. It's a soft metal, so it's real easy to bend. So if you need to make an adjustment on that, just uh, take some pliers and adjust it. Uh, starting to go pretty good now, pretty smooth. So what I'm going to do now, before I go any further, I'm going to organize my tools. It doesn't mean I'm going to put them all away, but I'm just going to organize them and look around for any parts. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know how it is. You leave a part out, and then I'm going to go over all, everything that I disconnected in my mind and look at it with my flashlight and make sure I've connected everything back on. Uh, under the car, I'm pretty good. Uh, I did that when I was under there, but I want to look at the top side. Okay, well organized all my tools didn't find any leftover parts uh, still gonna put the alternator back those are the two alternator bolts, bolts there and make the connections and then uh, what else uh, clean the serpentine belt over there put that back on and uh, after the alternator and uh, connect the air bridge, put some fluid in the uh, reservoir. I don't think I'm going to have a problem bleeding the power steering fluid because I didn't empty the rack or anything. I just emptied the reservoir. I'm sure I'll, I'll need to check the level, but I, I think it's going to work out okay. Um, that's about it. Anything else you can think of? I can't think of anything. So, uh, Let's put the alternator on and uh, clean the belt and put the belt on. The generator goes to 37 pounds. Okay, the belt's on. Let me give you a little tip on the belt. Uh, I used to have trouble, but I figured something out. Now, this is the last place the belt goes on. This is the tensioner. You remember, you. You put a wrench on on that, and you go that way, and it loosens it up. But the belt would keep falling away from this area, so I took a bungee and I just I just bungeed the belt so it was right about there, and it had a little bit of tension on it, and then it was in the right place. I could put the belt up over the socket get the socket on there, release the tension, flip the belt up over this tensioner, and then reapply the tension. So the, that's just a little tip for you on getting the belt back on. So all i got to do is uh, hook up the battery, put some fluid in, and uh, hook up the air bridge. I did not actually have to go underneath the car to get it around the harmonic balancer. I did the whole belt from the top. Um, I am going to jack it up though and just wipe down uh, one last time because the power steering fluid it, it dribbles into these little these hose covers. They're like plastic hose covers and they have a split down the middle and it dribbles in there and then it gradually dribbles out over the next few months as you drive the car. So. I like to keep the top of the spring clean and dry and a lot of leaks end up on the top of the spring. You can get front engine seal leaks, harmonic balancer bolt leaks, those are oil leaks. You can get power steering fluid leaks. Uh, so if you keep that area clean then you can spot the leaks better. Okay, well I guess that's a wrap. It runs good. I'll uh, check the fluid when I shut it off, and uh, that's how you put a uh, power steering pump in. If this helps you out. Give me a thumbs up. If you want more from Froggy, subscribe to my channel. It's free. I'll see you later. Froggy out.